Greetings. I'm your brother, Brother Minister Wasim Muhammad. Welcome to a new season in another edition of the Wasim Muhammad Show. I am so very grateful to have this opportunity to be here to represent the community to you in and around South Jersey. I first want to thank um, our lovely mayor, Mayor Dana Red, and her team, cabinet team, starting with City Council President Frank Moran. And also I want to thank School Board President Ms. Martha Wilson and Vice President Ms. Felicia Reyes Morton. And I have to give a shout out to the wonderful job and the upscale that we see in the education here in Camden with Superintendent Payman Rahana for it. I want to thank all of those wonderful brothers and sisters and people in the community and particularly the Board of Education that I am a member and I set on. I want to thank all of them for allowing me this opportunity to bring to you the Wasim Muhammad Show. But I am very, very excited about this show. And as always, we try to give you the story, to tell our story before uh, others tell their story. And we have to preserve and tell our story. So it gives me the wonderful opportunity to interview another Camden royalty. And I mean, when I say Camden royalty, this guy was one of my heroes and one of my mentors coming in and watching him play basketball in Camden, the legendary and one and only Milton Ice Wagner. Greetings, brother. Thank you, Kevin. Pleasure being here, pleasure being <laughs> yes, here. Sir. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. It's been a minute, and uh, I think this is a wonderful opportunity that we get to share you with the uh, this generation. And I know coming up, you know, we enjoyed you. I mean, you inspired so many people in and around our community with the work that you did uh, on and off the court, uh, being a role model. And we talk all these role models and mentors today. Long before that conversation came up, there was guys like you who was inspiring young men like me here in the community to do something with ourselves and make an impact for Camden City. How does that feel? Well, it feels good because I was that kid that had role models in front of me. Yes. Like guys like your brother, Jesse Walker, the Eddie Daniels, the Ben Hills, yes. the Dan Ruckers. So I had guys to follow also that motivated me to make me want to get to that level where they was. And I'm glad I could pass that along with the generation that was under me. Okay, yes, sir. So let's start with the history with this generation. And let's start with your history. And you grew up in the, uh, the downtown section of Camden, the wonderful downtown, the boogie down downtown, as, as they would say. Oh, yeah, it all started downtown <laughs> for me on 533 Stevens Street, man. It's where I grew up and uh, we used to play on 4th and Washington and pick up games. Like I said, guys like Ben Hill, Eddie Daniels, both of the Coxes, Robert Cox and Vince wow. Cox. All them guys, Pablo, you would know Pablo. Yes, so yeah. all them guys grew up downtown where I'm from. So I got to watch these guys, you know, and also Bob Ingram also. I don't want to yes, forget. Sir. But guys like that, I saw going, growing up in the playground, and they would let me come and play every now and then, you know. They saw I had a little game. I could shoot a little bit. So <laughs> they would kind of slide me in there. Yes, and, you know, I tried to do what I could do. But, man, them guys just motivated me to be what I became as a player and I just want to thank them guys because them guys really was an inspiration for me. Yes, sir. And, and also you went to Pine Point and I know that was the very first time I saw you in the uh, championship game versus Hatch yeah. that you were playing at Pine Point at the, uh, it was at Camden High yeah. School and always was, and you put on the show and I know Coach Turner was sitting there salivating at the time knowing that you were coming over there. You want to talk a little bit about those days? Well, actually it was kind of funny because going to Pine Point, everybody thought I was going to whistle, Wilson because <laughs> yes. that was in North Camden, yes. but I knew where I was going the whole time though, so <laughs> <laughs> but and, and the championship game was against Morgan Village. Morgan Village, you're correct. Morgan Village, yeah, correct. You know, and, and you had you had the late James Smith Onion, aka yeah, Onion yeah. Shep. Yes, sir. Shep. Oh, yes, you sir. know, so them guys, Pork Simpson. So, yes, I mean, being being able to play at Canada High. Because, like I said, I was going to games with my older cousins, and they used to take me to watch Dan Rucker and them guys play. And for me to play my middle school championship game there and with the legendary Clarence Turner there watching right <laughs> yes, under the basket, man, it, it, it was a big thrill for me. And to be able to go and perform and, and you know, I knew I was going to go to school there right after that, so that was really great for me. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, since we brought up that conversation, let's talk a little bit about the legendary Coach Clarence. Oh. 
Turner. I know it's a lot that you would like to say, and uh, you know, we probably have to bring you back just to have that conversation about him, just to talk to so many other uh, players about the, you know, the kind of guy that he was and what kind of inspiration and uh, right. how he, you know, taught and trained us. You talk a little bit about Coach Turner. Well, Coach was, he was like a father figure to all of us, you know. He he protected his kids. He was real protective of us. Even during games, he, was go he wasn't going to let nobody take advantage of us That's at right. any means. I mean, <laughs> he going to make sure the referees, the other coaches, it didn't matter. He always stood up for his players. And also, he, he, he gave us toughness, you know, mm -hmm. to enable to go past high school and be able to take other you know, situations that you might run into, man. I mean, me being under him, he prepared me for everything that I had in front of me in life. Yeah. You know, I can probably be coached by anybody in the country because <laughs> if you can play for Coach Turner, you can play for anybody. Because yes, he's going to get on your stuff, but he's going to love you at the same time. Yes, and as long as you know he had that love for you, when he's getting on you all the time, you know he had your back, man. And that prepared me for, for my career. Yes, sir. And also, you had some wonderful parents, too, uh, Mrs. Yes. and Mrs. Wagner, because you in town now visiting yeah. your mother. I mean, a great, great family that oh, you come man. from, you and David, Day Day Wagner, right. and, uh, right. you know, y'all grew up in that section. Y'all was like icons in that section, that part of Camden. Yeah, well, I was very fortunate to have both of my parents in my life, and they always taught us inside our household it was really southern because my mother's from georgia so yes. so it was a southern uh environment, environment inside yes. but once i go out you know we're the city though <laughs> but they taught us all the yes. the right things to do and what not to do and so when i went out there i knew exactly when to stay out of trouble and you know don't get in, caught up in different situations so i want to really thank my parents because they prepared me and my mother she tells me all the time people ask her what did you do different with your kids yes. and she said hey i do nothing i just they mother just told yes, what's sir. right what's wrong and they went out there and did it so yes, sir. so they was they was really big yes sir well i know i gotta find um a fineness in my heart for your mother because i never forget my late mother miss alberta walker right. uh you know when she passed the very first phone call that our family received right. was from your mother and she came by with something to eat and i and i and, you know i just you know, every time i see her that's that there's that love and even last a couple weeks ago we was doing the anti-violence March here in Camden, and she would stand outside. I believe it was with your cousin, yes. and uh, she was standing out there. And I gave her a little shout out on the born horn that we was out here because of her, and we love you. Yeah. And she was fond about oh, that. Oh, she really loved it. She said, "Oh man, that's so nice. That was beautiful what he did, you know, to give yes. me a shout out like that." Yes. I mean, she's always willing to help people. I, I know I have that in me yes. because she always, even now, she's in the hospital. She's worrying about everybody else instead of worrying about herself. I mean, yes. that's the kind of person she is, and everybody yes. loves her for that. Yes, sir. Indeed. Well, since we're talking about family, I mean, it's no accident for all of Camden and South Jersey and for the world because we do stream this show live on um, not only live, but recorded on the Camden City School District channel on YouTube. Um, it's not uh, it's not it's very known to the world that you are the father of the, the great. Uh, I don't know how we can say great twice. So nice, we had to do it twice, uh, Wag. But the great Dewan Wagner, who had a wonderful career here in Camden, the New Jersey leading scorer, and also uh, we had a great career at Memphis and won the NIT championship and played one year, went on to had a nice, a very good professional uh, career. And uh, following your footsteps, I mean, how did that make you feel? That made you feel proud. It made me feel real proud, you know, to have your have your son follow your footsteps, and that's something he always wanted to do was do what I did, but do it better. That's what I always used to stress to him: be better than what I was. You do what I do, but be better at it. And that's what he did. He took it to another level, and just to watch him mature from a kid to a young man, and you know, excel in the same sport that I excelled in. And I mean, it was it was just great just to see it. Yes, I know it was great watching. I know it was a, you know, for those of us who saw both of y'all, it was a treat not only to South Jersey fans, Camden City fans, but South Jersey fans, and really to the world. And uh, I know we got a lot we're going to talk about. And, uh, and I'm just giving uh, the community an uh, idea of tidbit of a lot of the things we're going to. But I want to back up just a little bit and talk about um, you back in high school. And then now you're great enter and going into Camden High School. Right. And you come there. And they had, to, I was thinking it was 1978. That's 78, 78, 78 year, and that great year, and uh, 
77, 78 year, cause school year, and uh, the year with Dennis Still and exactly. Jesse Mustafa walked my brother, and wow. that great team with Charles Payton and, and Billy, Cob Billy Coberson and Charlie Howe and uh, yes. Kenny Still, all those guys coming off the bench it was a great team. I wasn't to be a part of that. Wow, it, it was great. I was a freshman. I was trying to shake up that that lineup, but Coach <laughs> T, well, he he used to threaten them guys. Say, okay, you keep acting funny. This freshman here gonna move one of you guys out. And boy, them guys, they hey, they turned up the heat when he told them that though. But I played. I, I didn't really play freshman. I played JV as a freshman. Yes, sir. You know, I played probably a couple of freshman games. But I played mostly junior varsity. Practice with the varsity team, mm -hmm. but I could never crack that lineup though. Yes, but uh, just watching them guys, it's like I said, that was an inspiration to watch Dennis. I mean, your brother, man, and the Cobra said, and them guys, man, play. And I, I mean, I just couldn't wait to be on that varsity <laughs> squad, man. I was yes, waiting sir. for my time, man. And when I finally got it, I just tried to take advantage of it. Yes, sir. Well, you know, there's an argument going around town. And I'm not going to be biased because this is the YC <laughs> Muhammad show. And they talk about the, the best backcourt in Canada High history. So because we, you know, ended up the number one team in, his, in, uh, in, in the USA, which y'all were also ranked number one in the USA as well, uh, Vic Kostarfin, who's no stranger to the Camden community, who also was on the Wasim Muhammad show. Him and I were backcourt partners, but I must succeed and say that Billy Coberson and Milt Wagner probably was was the best backcourt, you know, duo that we've seen in Camden history. You know. Yeah, we have to be the one of the top <laughs> top five right there, top two at yes. least. Because, like I said, Coberson he groomed me because I started as a sophomore when he was a senior, and he pretty much co-signed for me to be his starting guard. I think it was uh, Calvin Witcher was was projected to be his backcourt yes, mate, yeah. but Calvin wouldn't pass the ball right. He always <laughs> wanted to dribble the air out the yeah, ball. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. remember. He had crazy handles now. Yes, he did. But he, had, he, he dribbled too much. Yes, so Cobras had told Coach, he said, Coach, man, get that. That sophomore right there, man. This guy right here, he the one. Yes. So Cole gave Coach T the nod, and Coach T put me in there, and the rest was history, man. And I yes, just sir. excelled off that. Yes, and what y'all won the state championship that exactly. year, and uh, exactly. first state championship year. And you had some wonderful careers, wonderful backcourt party with Corn, and uh, yes. uh, the next following year. I mean, that that was probably uh, that was a huge was team, a uh, big team. team. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Gary Timberlake, aka Corn. Yes, sir. he was six three. Kid from Philadelphia, I man, had the tough, Philly game tough. tough. And yeah. And you, then you had me at 6'5 at the guard. Then you got you got Gary Ware, you got Billy Thompson. I mean, it, I mean, we had a we had a crew. We had yes, a crew. Sir. Yeah. Had a crew, man. It, it, it was exciting, really yeah. exciting. So now that we uh, covered that, and uh, do we got, I think we got more time on this this segment. Okay, I think we covered that. I think we can go up to um, your senior year now, and. Now, arguably, the best basketball team, not only in Camden history, but in uh, South Jersey and New Jersey. But I think one of the national magazines rated y'all top five of top, oh, see, that, that 81 team. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, well, that team definitely was one of the best teams I've ever played with in my high school career. I mean, we pretty much had it all. I mean, you got me and Keith Williamson at the guard. You got Gary Ware and David Kelly at the small yes, forward. Sir. And then you got Billy Thompson at your center who was really a small forward. Yes, sir. But he used to get the ball off the rebound and he just go, we just run and he goes coast <laughs> to coast because that's what he did. But that get, that team, man, we averaged 102 points a game, no three point line. Yes, Everywhere sir. we went at, sold it out. I mean, yes, it, it, it was just unbelievable. Then we, I guess we was the first to bring out the Marquette warm-ups yes, also. You know, that, that was, yes, that was a new deal too. So, I yes, mean, it, it was so exciting, man, because everybody wanted to see us play. They said we was the greatest show on, on the court at that time, you know. So everybody traveled to watch us. And like I said, you know, came up to that last game, Neptune, man. It, it was a fluke, really. Yes, and people don't realize going to that game, yes, we got caught in the traffic. Yes. So by the time we got to the game, they was they had been shooting layups for about ten minutes, so they yes. rushed us in the locker room, get dressed. They gave us five minutes to warm up, and yeah. before you know it, we down twenty. <laughs> yes, you sir. know, so you we never really got back. into it, but yes, we sir. played them ninety nine more times. We went ninety nine times, so. <laughs> but you know it happened. They took advantage, and yeah, that, yes, it happens. And you are also ranked number one team in the country yeah, that going year, into that game. going into that game, and uh, and I, we got to say your story is definitely substantiated because Kevin Walls, who was also uh, the sixth man on he that team, six uh, was on this show. 
know. Evan <laughs> Walls was like that six man coming off the bench, yes, getting sir. about 16 a game. As a freshman. Yeah. As a freshman. Yes, so, yeah. so it was, I mean, that team was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. And uh, so as we concur that story, and I mean, that was a great team. I mean, y'all was a, fun to watch. And uh, uh, future NBA stars, yourself and Billy Thompson. And uh, I think y'all coined the mantra for Showtime because that was Magic Johnson that just entered oh, yes. with the Lakers. That's right. And uh, I think that in, in that yeah, particular year, that going into that year, and, uh, you know, that Showtime, y'all was putting it on, and yeah. y'all raised the ball high for a lot of Camden's teams. Yeah, we. I mean, it, it, was, it was unbelievable because being able to play with a team like that, and then you have Coach Turner. We pressed the whole game. It was so exciting. I mean, I just – and we play the top teams in the country. So people don't understand our schedule was nationally ranked. We played Pearl Washington. The Matha came up here and we put a spanking on them guys. I gave them 52. So, and they was number three in the country at the time. So we played a national schedule and we, we stepped up to the, to the plate every time. Yes, sir. Well, as you see, I told you, uh, sit back community of Camden. Uh, we have a treat. We have one of Camden royalty here, the, uh, the great Milt Wagner. Uh, who did so much for the city of Camden and putting helping putting Camden on the map. And we just gave you a little tad bit of things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a whole list of things through this lobby art of conversation. So don't you go nowhere. As my children say, Dad, nobody has a dial anymore, but don't touch that remote. We'll be right back. You'll learn in your life that dreams have the, have the tendency to become things and thoughts and once you can think something up and dream something you can create it and I think that's what I like most about your school and about the affirmation that I saw earlier that you're affirming what's inside of you never forget that that's very valuable and very important because you're all stars just like our star cluster so keep reaching for those stars We are back and welcome back to the Wasim Muhammad show. I know I'm having a great time getting this legacy of history that so many Camden people uh, went around the country that impacted the world. And uh, I'm just honored to be here with uh, Milt Wagner, Ice, as we know him for in the community, talking to him about some wonderful things. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's great to be here once again, and uh, it's a joy for me. I know you've been trying to get me on the show for the longest, and my yes. schedule's been, yes. you know, back and forth, but I'm just glad to be here, and then we just talk about the, the city, everything that's going on, the past, and what's in the future. Yes, sir. So while we're on there, talk, give us a little idea. Well, you talked a little bit about your childhood and growing up, about having mentors. And in order for you to be great to our young people, you got to have a mentor, somebody that you look up to, even if your, your father's not present, your uncle or the neighborhood friend or somebody, your mother's friend, or somebody, a stepfather, that we need those mentors. Talk to us a little bit, Mel, about, you know, the difference that you see to our young people uh, when you grew up and to what's going on now and what inspiration can you help to bring to them? Well, it's just like you said, mentors. I mean, we all had mentors when we came up. Just like I said, the guys I mentioned that followed, that I looked up to, them guys were mentors to me. You know, they they made sure I did what I was supposed to do. They tell me what not to do. And it just was an inspiration. And I think the key to our, our youth now is just having positive mentors in their life. And a lot of them don't have that, you know, and I think that can, that can decide how successful you are in life, just having a, a positive mentor just to guide you and show you the right way. Yes, sir. So what did um, playing basketball and going around the world traveling, you played overseas, you played here in the NBA for some years, played with the greatest NBA team of probably arguably of all time, the Lakers with Magic Johnson. What, what, how did that 
influence your life and what, what impact do it have on you right now? What the, how does it make you feel? What you, did it make you want to give back? Oh, yeah, most definitely because me being, able, being growing up from here, you know, I want kids to know that, hey, I, I walk the same streets you, you kids walk and you can make it. You just have to have positive role models in your life and you have to be able to, to do what's the right thing. You know, you, you know what's, what's right, what's wrong. You just have to make sure you take that right path and not that wrong path. And me growing up, I grew up the same way you kids grew up. You can make it, believe me. And I'm not the only one that's made it out of this. We have a lot of successful role models that's from Camden, New Jersey. And I can name a few, the Mike Rozier, you got Ty Chip Tribbett, the gospel singer, yes, you sir. got Tasha Smith, the actor. I yes. mean, we have a lot of positive role models that come out of this city. So it's a lot of positivity that comes out here. And I think we need to stress that a little more. They always talk about the negatives of Camden, but there's so much positive that's coming out of here. And I think that needs to be educated to these kids versus all the negative stuff. And I think that would be a big help for our society. Yes, sir. And I know that when I was at the White House one time with Mayor Dana Red and uh, your former mayor of Louisville, right. who was on uh, President Obama's cabinet at the time. I can't remember his name. I'm looking at his face. And then when he, when he, when he knew that we were in, in, in the White House, he came over to us just to personally thank Mayor Dana Red um, for having you all called the Camden Connection right. there in Louisville, right. how that impacted Louisville, impacted their city during your reign there. How, how was that growing up during a golden era of basketball? What is the difference you would think now to what you see today with the young kids and the status of basketball today? Well, it's a whole lot different. You know, they got all this AAU tournaments. We didn't have we we didn't have that back then. You know, AAU tournaments kind of taking over a lot of these kids right now. They pretty much control the kid. It's not the high school no more. Correct. And you know, coach, the legendary coach Turner, he saw that vision early. Yes, sir. Because he wouldn't let us play AAU. He saw it. He's like, yes, nah, 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 nah. You, yes. I played maybe one tournament my whole career at AAU. The yes. whole time, but now they they've taken control of these kids. Cause even as a college coach, I basically had to go more to the uh, AAU coaches versus the high school coaches. Just yeah. and they had better relationships with the kids, and it's yeah. it shouldn't be that way. But that's the way they have it set up. Then you got the sneaker companies and all that stuff. I mean, it's so much involved. This it's so different. I Man, we just was we just had it plain and simple. You knew what you had to do, high school, take care of your business, decide what school you want to go to, and, yes. then, and then there it is, and then you go be successful. And what I had to do, being from Camden, I, I know I'm representing Camden wherever I go. You know, that's why, like you said, when you came to Louisville, people was like, oh, you from Camden? Yes, sir. Because we represented ourselves, you know, I'm, we're representatives of Camden. So we'll let you know, we have some good people out of Camden. You go know, ahead. we good people. So yes, that's why when you see people and when you say you're from Camden, New Jersey, say, oh, you know Milt Wagner, you know Billy Thompson, Kevin Walls? Yeah, because we, we was that positive role models coming from Camden yes, and we sir. represent our city impact in the city and that's that's so great and uh, so now since we're there we're talking about Louisville now let's go on um, uh, you coming out of high school highly sought after and I know the very first time I heard about Michael Jordan was from you and that you played in the McDonald all American game with him because we was wondering who the hell could be more impactful in high school basketball than ice because we were in middle school at the time watching that. You want to talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah, my uh, on my McDonald's all American team, I had Michael Jordan, Patrick Hewen, yes. Chris Mullen, yeah. <laughs> and a guy named Manuel Forrest who wound up going to Louisville with me that same year. Oh, he was in McDonald's all American. Yes, sir. So we all was on the same. McDonald's All-American team, mm -hmm. and, and and the All Star game, Jordan had 30 that game, mm -hmm. and you know even then, we watched. You didn't know how great he really was going to be. You knew he was really good, yes, but sir. you ain't know he was going to become the <laughs> the goat. You know what I'm saying? You didn't know yes, he's going to be the goat. <laughs> yes, but sir. man, I, and we knew them. We was friends then, and we still know each other today. So yes, you sir. know, but. You know, we I got to play with them guys. That probably was one of the best McDonald's All-American teams assembled, yes, if you sir. ask me, you know. Yes, so <laughs> so for me to be a part of that team and, and then to go on to the University of Louisville as a freshman, it's funny, it was a lot of us paired up. 
like we had two guys from Louisville, two guys from North Carolina, Michael Jordan, Buzz Peterson, yes. Patrick Hewen was two guys from uh, Georgetown. So we used to talk trash, say, okay, <laughs> we're going we, we gonna to win a championship this year. Yes, so he had his yes, party, sir. had my party, me and my boy, we're going to win it. Yes, so, sir. and it wind up my freshman year, I, Louisville was in the Final Four, yes, sir. North Carolina's in the Final <laughs> and Georgetown was in the Final Four. <laughs> yes, sir. So we had a chance to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So to see yeah. who was who and what was exactly. what. Yes, yeah, so what was that experience like? I mean, as you said, you know, because Coach Turner prepared so many of us for that next yeah. level. Yeah. But I, th that was the next level level. Oh, yeah. And that was the big lights. And to come out of our high school and go right to the Final Four, how was that? But I'm, like I said, my, fresh, my, my, my senior year at Canton High, man, it was like a – we, just like you said, we was the biggest show around here, you know, <laughs> yes, and nationally everybody knew us. And, and so we, we had big crowds wherever we, we went. So it was no problem for me playing in a big crowd under yes. pressure. That's what I did. It was no problem for me. And my freshman year was in a Final Four in New Orleans in the Superdome. Yes, sir. Now, this kind of took me out. I walk out of my locker room, it's 60,000. Yeah. 60, yes. I mean, you look up, it's like, wow. That's the first thing yeah. I said. And then I had gloves yes, at this sir. time. People yes, don't realize yeah. I had yeah. gloves because I had a had a virus in there and I lost all my skin on my hand. Yes, sir. So I had to wear golf gloves. Yes, sir. I remember so, that. Yes, sir. So I'm going out there, 60,000, Final <laughs> Four, in gloves. Yeah. So I'm like, wow. So people, they tripping, I'm tripping. People like, man, he's going to do this, you know. So, but, yes, you know, sir. I had been practicing with them because they was giving me all these different color, color gloves to play with because I had to play with them. I had no feeling on my hands. So yes, it was sir. all new skin. But anyway, I went out there, and uh, we had to ask John Thompson, could I play with these gloves? Yes. You know, because he thought it might be a shooting weapon or something, okay. you know. Yeah. So, you know, John, he coach said, oh, if he can't play with them, cool. Yes, so, you sir. know, and I got in the game, first game, I hit the jumper. So he looked yes, at me sir. like, okay, yes, you so know, what oh, what, I, what have I done, you know. But then, you know, everything else faded it out. But I hit my first jumper. Yes, sir. And, you know, I tell him, too, that's another – Another thing I got from growing up in Camden, they said, how can you play with gloves? I said, we used to shovel off the courts. Go ahead. And we on. put gloves on, we, we getting it in. Yes. I said, this is nothing for me. And they was golf gloves. They weren't real gloves. Yes. I said, this is what do we do, you know? And so, you know, it, it's nothing. So they were like, wow. So they tripped out on it. But, yes, you know, sir. it was fun, though. It was fun. Yes, sir. And that was, that was a great, that was a great time. I know we were, we were rooting and playing on that level. And then you guys come back. I think Louisville went to three or four final four while you I went there? to three. three I went to three then I must around with my sophomore year yes sir. and this was against five jam and slam in Houston okay. which I think probably was one of the best of the college best. games of all time and yeah. you want to talk a little bit about that because now you join by your teammate from high school Billy right. Thompson right. and do you think you had any influence with that with Billy going to Louisville uh, Probably a little, just a little bit, you know. Yes, that's sir. like anything. You see a kid, a guy from your city go somewhere and be successful, that's and right. you got a chance to join him. Yes. It's a no-brainer. Yes, you right. know, he yes. saw I was successful yes, my sir. freshman year, so he was like, "Hey, I might say he, we come from the same place, so yes, I can go here and do the same." So Billy came on down, and hey, and he was the number one player in the country at that time coming yes, out sir. of high school, so. So now we got back-to-back -back McDonald's All-Americans. Yes, sir. You know, and we got one coming up in the rear. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yes, sir. you know what I'm saying? Yes, so, sir. so, you know, we was breeding them, dude. We was breeding yes, them like sir. it wasn't nothing. But yes, sir. we got to play the University of Houston, who had uh, Hakeem Elijah, Juan and Clyde Drexler. Yes, sir. And at the time, they was considered five jamma slamming, and we was considered doctors of dunk. Go ahead. You know, yes, so so they knew that game was gonna be played above the rim. <laughs> you know, and even in the shoot around before the game, we had like ten thousand people just at a shoot around just to see the dunker line. Wow. On both teams, they just wanted to see who had the best dunk line. Yes, sir. Because they knew, you know, we had dudes that played above the rim, man. So it it, it was unbelievable, man. And and that was my sophomore year, and. And the game, it should have been played somewhere else. You know about Albuquerque. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> that altitude <laughs> killed us. Yes, that altitude. For sure, at the University of New Mexico, where I went to school at, and that, and I would see teams literally have oxygen tanks on the bench, yes. and that was the mystique of the pit. Yes, it, it, it's no place for a Final Four, especially with teams not accustomed to that altitude. So, yes. you know, we ran out of gas, but the, it was I think it was about, they say it was about 20 dunks that game. Yeah. I mean, it, it was ridiculous. I mean, we was winning most of the most part of the game until like 
middle of the second half, then we ran out of gas because yes. we only played seven guys. Yes. They had more depth than us, and that, that determined the outcome of the game. Yes. And they know if we played them anywhere else, we would have. Yes. They know it too. We are we were running to them guys all the time. We are game, and still man. still bragging. Right. We should have played somewhere else. We'd have got you. But you know, but it was a great game, yes, man. Sir. Everybody still said they was one of the most watched games in, in, in uh Final Four history. Yes, sir. Yeah. And that's great to have a, a guy from Camden a part of that history. And could you can only imagine being a young guy watching all this and having a, a view of these guys and what they were doing and this was great and this is why I'm glad that we have the opportunity to talk because I know the community is going to have a field day listening to this because these are conversation and you have always been a down to earth guy you know what I mean even with all the success that you have had we have never in the community I mean you're the kind of guy that could talk to anybody I mean I don't care where they were at if they were in the boardroom if they were on the street if they was in the barbershop we're here now at a touch of jazz barbershop here right. having a barbershop conversation and uh, sharing it with the world but you know where do you think your humility has come from? My parents. Once again, my parents. If you if you know you know my parents. <laughs> yes, my parents are they down earth people. They'll yes, give sir. their their last dime to someone. You know, yes. I had friends. You know, I tell us I have friends that was strung out on drugs at one time. You mm -hmm. know, but they knew they were my friends. My parents never turned their back on them. Yes, They'll come in and say, Miss Wagner, can I get a dollar? And my mom would say, I'll give you some food. That's right. And she, yes. she'd give a plate. That's school. That's and, right. and, and, and they never forgot it because yes, a lot sir. of my friends and I'm not mentioning names, but they got themselves together they never forgot and they come back and say miss wagner mr wagner i remember when i was looking like the the, the walking dead out there yes, and you never turned your back on me that's right you know you always had a hand out for me and they never forgot that and that's where i got that from my parents man. Yes, i mean it's just it's just all of them I, yes, I can't say nothing else that's what it comes and i know when we would travel around you know playing basketball because that's the days that we went all around camden right. playing basketball your house was one of the stops that we knew we could stop from to get some food from uh, miss miss hazel she gonna feed everybody yes sir. one of them georgia girls boy she cooked everything Every day, and she gonna feed everybody. She she yes, in the sir. hospital right now. Talking about she can't wait to get to the kitchen. Yes, yeah, no, I said, come on, man. But you know that's yes, that's what she does, though, man. But yes, yeah, sir. I I got my humility from from my parents for sure. And my dad, he's probably one of the coolest guys out there. Yes, everybody sir. knew, and he was known as Daddy Wags to everybody, you know. So so yeah, he just was so down to earth. I got my personality from both both parents. Yes, sir. yes. yeah, that, that's just great times, and that's the Camden that we're trying to show our young people that we have to instill back in them the sense of community yeah. you know what i mean because the whole block knew who your parents and who you all was right. and everybody right. looked out for everybody right. and everybody and that's that's, that's the camp the that we grew up in. that's the key just like i said you can go down the street if somebody down the street saw you was getting into something they gonna come out and say hey what you doing boy <laughs> yes, you know yes. yeah, but you know we gave permission our parents gave permission for somebody else to discipline you <laughs> You're correct. And that's what it but yes. now you can't do that that's but right. then we gave the whole neighborhood you know, opportunity to discipline their kids. That's what they did. I yes, mean, it was normal. And if we saw their kids it do the same thing. So, and you know, that helped. That's like I said, it helped us grow as as, as young kids. Yes, sir. Well, there we go. Like I said, listen, I, I told you we're going to have a wonderful time. I think community that you need to hear this story. And anybody that know Mel Wagner know that he's a down-to-earth, humble guy. Well-liked. Well-liked by everybody. So we're going to continue this conversation with Milton Ice Wagner. Don't you go nowhere. As again, once again, don't touch that dial or remote. Let's say we said, say my children get on me every time. God, I be said that nobody has a dial or remote. But don't touch the door. Call someone. Let them know the Wasim Muhammad show is on. We'll be right back. During a walk to school day, we're doing a Father's Day. Basically, we're just, they ask all the fathers to actually bring their children to school today to show the importance of um, fathers being in their children's lives. A lot of studies show that the more you're involved in your children's lives, the better their grades are, the more ambitious they become later on in life. I mean, the absence of a parent is hard enough, but whenever you can step in and show them that they're doing a great job, it, it helps motivate them. These kids, you know, our children, we're out here every day trying to make this a better place for us. And the only way we can do it is one parent at a time. You gotta take care of your responsibilities. 
to get children in school, show some initiative, show them that education is the key. Our children needs us. We need us as good role models. Without a good role model, you know, we can be anything. You know, you, you're gonna lose all morals. But with a good role model that's willing to be there, that's willing to show you support, you know, and that's, that's gonna be that, that defender. They know that we're here for them. And we're back once again. And like I said, I, I, I want to get right back into conversation because I think we got so much to talk about. I mean, you have such an illustrious career and an illustrious life story. Is it any regrets, anything that you regret uh, you took, that you had in your life uh, that you want to share with the audience? You think about how to deal with regret or whatever the case you want to do, you want to share with the audience with that? Well, I, w I wouldn't say I have any regrets on how I how I ran my life or how I live my life Correct. you know because I think I did everything I was supposed to do but I would say as a kid growing up and having an opportunity to maybe go to college and get a scholarship when you get that scholarship make sure you take advantage of it don't because nothing is given you know and and I tell people these stories a lot of people don't know this when I was uh with the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, we talk about that too, but I'll just give you an instant, yeah. When I was with the Los Angeles Lakers, my rookie year, Jerry West told me after my, my uh, rookie year, he said, Milt, I need you to go home and lift weights. I said, all right, you know, I wasn't a weight guy, you know. <laughs> yes. I was like, all right, all right, you know. Back then, you didn't have personal trainers. You, you had to do it on your own. Yes. Yeah, so I said, all right, all right. So I come back, you know, I lift here and there, here and there. So you know, I go back for training camp my second year. So he says, uh, he said, okay. No, he didn't say anything actually, but I was the same size. Yes, so he didn't say nothing. He just kind of, he was a general manager at the time, Jerry, the, the legendary Jerry West. That's right. So, and, uh, so he's like, uh, okay. So we know we're going through preseason, preseason. So, okay. Now and all of a sudden he, he decides to wave me, right? So, okay, and, you know, Pat Riley comes in, Milk, you know, we're going to let you go. We're moving, we did a great job for us. Okay. Now, my son was at Memphis. This is 2000, what, 2002 now. Mm -hmm. So this was 1988. No, 2002, my son's working out for Jerry West. He was general manager with the Grizzlies, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so I'm at the workout. This is when we was at Memphis. <laughs> yes, sir. So I'm at the work. After the workout, he goes up to my son. He says, if your dad had your body, he'd still be in the league. <laughs> so, you know, and I said, and I yes. told my son the story, still, you okay. know. Yes, sir. And I said, man, don't, I said, man, there's nothing given to you, man. When yes, these, sir. these, then when they ask you to do something. Yes, sir. You go ahead and be the best you could be because you got all these other guys that can get that money. That's Everybody right. can shoot. Everybody can rebound. Mm. But you got to be really good at what you do. And yes, you got to, you got to create your, you got to, you got to create your craft. You got to study your craft and yes, be sir. good at it yes, you know so don't no, don't never take nothing for granted even though i was good because i was always natural mm -hmm. you know i can get away with a lot of stuff because yes, i just sir. was always better than everybody yes sir. but you know and the nba is going to catch up to you <laughs> yes, sir. you know and i still felt like i was good enough <laughs> yes, but sir. i didn't do what he asked me to do you understand right. at yes, that sir. time so he feel like i can you can be replaced yes sir. so you know and that's just just a little thought I want to give to people. You know, you got a, you got a chance and an opportunity to mm -hmm. do something. You take advantage of it. Be the best you can be. Don't don't expect nobody to give you anything. You go ahead and earn it and take it. Yes, sir. Well, I think that was uh, well said because what we try to do, even in the ministry as a minister now, the Nation of Islam, I try to inspire people and give them information, inspiration. And this is what makes athletes so great right. because you are really replacing the traditional sense of what right. ministry is all about because actually playing basketball and being a role model and being on the top is a ministry right. and it's all interconnected. Yeah. So we, and I'm glad we putting down labels now and getting to the reality of life because that, that lesson that you gave right, right there is a lesson that can carry anybody on anything, right. whether you're in the boardroom, a business room, Competing in business, that you're trying to uh, use, uh, competing for a job, right. in school, anything right. you can yeah, use that. Is. Exactly, it's more. It all, it all 
goes into everything. Jobs, like you said, jobs, whatever it may be, you have to use those same tools. You know, you have to work harder, be the best you can be, and let them let them see that how hard a worker you are and how how serious you is about that job, and, and show them that you're really serious about what you're doing. Yes, sir. Okay, so now, now we and I know you talked about it because then, 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 then you were picked up by Miami Heat. Now you know, it, was, it wasn't over yet. You know what I mean? So we go in there. So that's a great hey, time. Well, then I figured it out. You know, <laughs> I realized. Hey, yeah. I didn't. I wasn't discouraged. I could have been discouraged and be like, wow, you know, because I've never been cut before. Yes, you sir. know, so I could be discouraged. Put my head down. I said, okay, I'm gonna use this tool mm -hmm. that I learned. You know, because you're gonna go through ups and downs, but you have to learn from them. And then the next time, you you know what to do the next time. So that's what happened. I went overseas to Israel for a year, mm -hmm. and I had a I had a teammate of mine named Kenny Simpson, and this guy was a workaholic. You talking about work <laughs> off <laughs> off the court? And so yes, what he used to do, he used to drag me to the gym with him. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, we in Israel. He's my teammate, but we doing extra shooting, shooting. I mean, he had me doing extra stuff I would never do because I was always naturally better than everybody. Yes, sir. But once I started doing that. I mean, my game went to another level. So then I came back the next year and went, and, 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 and Miami Heat invited me to camp. I played in their summer league, and I averaged about 24 a game in their summer league, and they signed me right on the dot. Mm -hmm. And that's because I put in that work, mm -hmm. the off season that I never really did. Yes, sir. you know, before that, I always just would go to camp, and I, I always was better than everybody. Yes, sir. But I understand that that can catch up with you, and, and people need to understand that. So I played for the Miami Heat, and I was a teammate again with my fellow Camden mate, uh, Billy Thompson. Yes, so we played with the Los at High School, Los Angeles Lakers, and the Miami Heat together. Yes, sir. So I got to play a year with them guys. So, you know, but that was all the hard work I put in the off season, which I wasn't doing prior to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's just a great conversation. And Milt, I'll tell you like this, uh, your uh, uh, on the court, um, and talking to you now is making me understand and see why uh, uh, that sometimes the creator open up space for people because it's based on what you're giving homage to. You're giving homage to your family. Yeah. You're giving homage to the people in the community. Yes. Giving homage to people in the neighborhood. Yeah. Do you think that that kind of uh, 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 I don't want to call it because we want to separate church and state. Right. Do that kind of magnitude? Is what's, is what's needed to as well to, about your spiritual life. Is that magnitude there? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, all that, the city, my parents, my friends, yes, my mentors, all that was installed in me. Yes, sir. So that enabled me to go out into the world and, and prosper, you know, at whatever I needed to do. And I'm able to handle any situation. That's because the way I grew up here, yes, you know, and I think that's big. And I, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Being, I'm so proud to be from Camden, New Jersey, and I let people know yes, all sir. the time. Yes, you know, sir. I'm from Camden, New Jersey, no hesitation. Yes, sir. Yeah. It, 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 now that we're there, and it kind of came back to me where I was trying to lead to, and because uh, you know, you have those moments, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you try, yeah, yeah. you wing it, you just you start shooting into the game. Yes, sir. And, uh, what, what I wanted to say it, it, that. You also had a wonderful coaching career, too, as well. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Because, you know, those careers just don't stop. Yeah. You know, you keep going. And right. in life, you keep moving. You right. keep motivating yourself to be the best at whatever it is. Right, yeah. Well, I, I played 13 years professionally. Played a couple years in the league. I played nine years overseas. Mm -hmm. And after my 13-year career, I decided, uh, you know, I wanted to retire. So mm -hmm. I came home for a year, just took a year off just to – figure out what I wanted to do. And then I decided I wanted to get into college coaching. Mm -hmm. And so uh, John Calipari, actually, he was, coach, he was coaching the 76ers, assistant coach of 76ers mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I've been knowing him for years, back in five-star days, you know, right, so yeah. we always been good friends. <laughs> yes. And he asked me, you know, would I like to get in? You know, I asked him actually back then, when it's all said and done, I want to get in coaching. Uh -huh. If you're still coaching, he said, yes. "All right, just let me know." So it just happened. He's over the bridge, and I'm home. So I reached out to him. He reached out to me, and he said, hey, "I'm about to get into college coaching." Mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, I'm ready." Yes. Sir. So he got the job at the University of Memphis, and so I started my career there as director of basketball operations because mm -hmm. I needed a degree. 
Correct. to be a coach. Yes. So what I did was I, I was a director of basketball operations mm -hmm. and I was going to school at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I was going to school and, and working as a as director of basketball operations. Then once I got my degree, then I became a, became a college coach. Yes. And my first college coaching job was at the University of Texas El Paso, say, you UTEP, say, you, know, yes, <laughs> you know, so that's where it really yes, all started. And at the same, well, even I go back to Memphis and then DeWine came to Memphis, uh -huh. played one year with us at Memphis and he was part of the one and done deal. He was the yes, first sir. one and done actually. Yes, he the one that started all that one and done <laughs> talk. Ahead. Come on. He, he's, the, he's the originator. So. <laughs> and it wasn't planned that yes, way, sir. just so you know. <laughs> Camden in the house again. Yeah, again, yes, again, yeah. And so, yes, but anyway, that. And I, and I, I want to thank you too, because we got an opportunity. I was with my son who's doing, the, brother Kadir, who's doing the camera. We had an opportunity to come to Memphis that year That's right. and uh, to the basketball camp right, there and, right. and it was there you and Mustafa Farrakhan and everybody was it was a great time and I appreciate that I just wanted to say thank you yeah. for the opportunity because it was you all who opened up doors because oh, I you know I think that you know you know we did we could we could afford to get there but you know we got there but we didn't have to and I know that had to do with the Camden connection oh, it's no question you know wherever I'm at people know if I'm there it's open arms. You can contact me, and I'm gonna make sure you're okay. You know, I'm <laughs> yes, gonna I'm gonna take care of all my people from camp. There's no doubt about that. Yes, I sir. never turn my back on anybody. Yes, you sir. know, so yeah. So, so a little bit. So I want to, you know, I, I know I've, when I told a lot of people I was going to interview you, they, there was a lot of questions that people wanted to ask okay. and things. Like that. So I'm trying to go back. And what was it like playing with the uh, legendary? Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oh, it, it was <laughs> it, it was unbelievable. And it's funny, man. I always said I wanted to play for the Los Angeles Lakers yes, as a kid. Yes, you sir. know, and I was actually had to had a chance to play with them guys. It was like unbelievable. To go to practice every day. You got you got three future Hall of Famers. You know, you got Magic, Kareem. James Worthy, yes, you know, you got Byron Scott, AC Green, Michael yes, Cooper. Yes, I mean, and I was the I was the only rookie at the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, they used to try me, you know, they used to pop me. <laughs> and then that candy came out of me, you know, I started popping them back. And they respected me after that though. But see, that's all, I'm gonna go back again from growing come up on, the way I grew on. up. You know, we don't take no stuff, you know, yes, we, yeah, sir. we can dish it, you can give it and dish it. <laughs> but you know, they respect me though, yes, you know, sir. you know, yes, but, but just playing against them guys, man, watching Magic every day, Kareem, see Kareem shooting them sky hooks, man. It, it was just a sight to see yes, sir. how this, how he just, Master that uh, a sky hook. And just think about it, nobody shoots a sky hook. Okay, no more. Nobody. Exactly. Yes, Not sir. one person. Yes, sir. You know, and that's that's all he shot. Yes, sir. And he could shoot it from the foul line like the jump shot. That was like his jump shot. <laughs> but man, he was one of the wow. greatest guys. Man, very knowledgeable. You know, I used to sit on the plane with him sometimes. He like like to talk a lot of knowledge to me. Yes, you know, sir. he reads he reads a lot of books. Mm -hmm. Very knowledgeable brother, man. He. I, I mean, I, I, it was just so great just to be around them guys. And, and once again, they was mentors. They took me in. I was the only rookie. Yes, sir. They took me in, and they and they schooled me along the way. They didn't leave me out there. Mm -hmm. They like, come on, Rook, you going with us? Because they call you Rook at that time. Yes, sir. You know, I carried the bags, and <laughs> yes, you know, sir. see, we didn't have private planes then. Yes, sir. We we we, we ride with everybody else. We yes, had the first class section, but we yes, ride in commercial with everybody else. Yes, sir. So I had to go and get everybody food. They yes, go to the bus, and I got a bag of food going to the bus. So, you know, it was cool, though, yes, you know. Sir. They yes, took sir. care of me when we went to the movies or something, though. So I was, I was all right. But, but, man, just going through that, though, it made you appreciate. Humble, yeah. It didn't make you humble, you know. Yes, they not like Because they say we had to go through it. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I know when uh, uh, Michael Cooper also went to New Mexico, exactly. when he used to come, and I, he knew I was from Camden. Right. And that's when I knew that they picked up the nickname for you, Waggy Dog. They said, Waggy Dog. Yeah, man, they, they labeled me Waggy. <laughs> Dog, man, that was my name, man. I mean, they were so. I mean, just like I said, it was some great guys, man. And you know, I guess my personality, they just kind of got gravitated to me also, cause that was just myself, you yes, know. And, and you know, everybody, they like, wow, man, you's a cool guy. I can see them guys today, man, and we just like. 
It was yes. like it was yesterday, man. Yes, we go in and, you know, say what's up and yes. give us a dap, and we might go have dinner, yes, man. Sir. But, but talk a little bit about that basketball fraternity. People don't understand that because, like, you know, when we see each other, it's, yeah. a, it's something that's like oh. a connection that people have, and, like, yeah. you see those guys. Talk a little bit about that, that, that people think is a mystique, but they don't understand it actually really is a train. It's like a, it's like a, a fraternity. You it's, know? It, it's a fraternity. I mean, we've all been through the same stuff. When we know each other, we yeah. know. We all went through the same ups and downs. I mean, believe me, that fraternity just going through the wars with them guys and not knowing they went through some of the wars you <laughs> went through. You ain't had to go through it with them. Yes. You know you went through them. And we all follow each other. You yes. know, we all follow each other. So we see each other, what he's doing, what he's doing, what he's doing. So when we get together, man, it's like a it's like a fraternity because we could sit down, we could talk conversation like we talk, <laughs> yes, but it's natural conversation because yes, we talk in the same language. <laughs> and, yes, and, and that's what it is. We talk the same language. language yes, yeah, sir. but it is good, like I said, and, and it's all over the country. Yes, sir. It ain't just here. It's, it's all, all over, over the, the world. Country. Yes, right. All over the world. Well, and scripturally, we said, my sheep hear my voice. And that's a yes. principle to that. Okay. When Jesus say that, my sheep hear my voice, because that means those who are in the struggle with you, those who went through the same experiences that you went through, y'all hear each other's voice, y'all see each other, and y'all comrades for life. Yes, sir. So we, I, I know I'm having a great time, and uh, we winding down on this segment, and uh, we're going to spend a little time, we ain't going nowhere, right? We're going to spend one last segment talking a little bit about, you know, anything that you would like to talk about, the current, uh, how you feel about the Camden High School, uh, the new Camden High School coming on, and we're going to talk about all that. So don't go nowhere. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about how Milt Wagner feels about the new Camden High project and um, his just feelings on what he feel about the community and where Camden is going at and where he's going at in the future because he's still a young man. In shape, you're looking good, Ice. Hey, <laughs> so, so we'll be right back. Don't touch that remote. We'll be right back. back and we winding down on the last segment of the Wasim Muhammad show and I want to thank Milt Wagner I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your busy schedule being here with your mother and you know you got your beautiful family you know your family that you here four kids but yes, hey, your, your niece yes, Munir, the yes, one the Shonda and my youngest Janae. Yes, sir. And they got another, another one coming. I seen a picture that's on social media with the young one that's coming. A new, another Wagner oh, coming, yeah, huh? Yeah, well, we got one more now. We got a little <laughs> DJ Wagner, Dewan Jr., yes, and he sir. has a chance to be better than both of us. So, yes, so get ready for that one. Oh, boy, that's saying a lot. We can't wait to see that. But before we go on, I want to talk a little bit. We talk about all your championships in Camden High School and Louisville, but we can get a chance to talk. You talked about some of the players that you played with, with the Lakers in, the, in Miami Heat, but you won the now you won an NBA World Championship as well. You yes, know? man. Being able to win a World Championship, you don't understand. It's, I guess I'm one of me and Billy's one of the few guys to win a high school, college, and NBA World Championship. So I mean that that was a blessing itself, man. And and to be with the Los Angeles Lakers to win it, and it was against the Detroit Pistons, the Bad Boys <laughs> at that time. Yes, you know, with Isaiah and yes, Joe Dumars wow. and Vinnie Johnson and them guys. Lambeer, I mean, it was just to be part of that atmosphere. I was a rookie. I didn't play that much as a rookie, but that year, people don't realize, I started seven games that year because of injuries. Oh, I remember that. So, yes, so that, I was part of that, yes, that, that, that road for success there, you know, and that kind of groomed us because that got, that got me some experience. 
and we held up the fort till them guys got healthy and, mm. and then we was able to go on and win a championship. But it, it was great, man, being able to win a world championship. And that's representing the city again. Yeah, so right. we got world championships in the city. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> keep it going, keep it camping. Because yes, that was the golden era of just Camden, Athletics. I mean, you all were rocking and shocking with Louisville and the Lakers, and yeah. Mike Rogier was playing in the NFL, Trophy Heisman winner. Trophy winner. I mean, I it mean, was just a wonderful time I mean. for Camden to be a part of Camden. Yes, I mean, we had a lot of great athletes come out of this city. I mean, you know, some some didn't go as far, but we had some that could have went. You know, it just right. it happens that way. That's but right. we got a lot of a lot of people. You got the late, you got the. Uh, the older Derek Ramsey, Art Steele, they yes, was right. yeah. two with, guys. With Doc Lee and up there. But Doc Lee told me you owe him one. You know that, right? Yeah. I, I, mean, he don't have, I just left him on hat now. He I'm about five in the hole. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. I got to go see him. But, yeah. But they say Doc probably might have been better than both of them. I know. They all say And that. they say that. I saw I Art Steele this past summer in Louisville. He said Doc Lee probably was better than all of them. <laughs> yeah. He said that. That says a lot. So, yeah. But, yeah, but, you know, just – able to win a championship and represent my city once again. Like I said, wherever I can do to rep my, represent my city, I'm going to do. And I'm yes, going to be, try to be the best at it. Yes, yeah, so, well, since we're on that conversation, Camden High School, I know I think the community is waiting to hear what you have to say about that. And, uh, you know, speak from your heart. I mean, this is a show that we can get garner all opinions, and this is yeah. the freeness that we get. You know? Yeah, first of all, I hate to see it get torn down. And I think it should have been – handled earlier before it got to this point that it's to the point you just got to tear it down. Yeah. They could have tried to preserve it point. way before this happened, but nobody stepped up. They just let it just deteriorate, deteriorate, and now it's to the point you got to tear it down. So, I mean, they leave no, they leave you no choice, mm -hmm. but if you're going to rebuild it, rebuild it the way it's supposed to be. That's right. Don't try to make it something that it's, it's not. We're yes. not accustomed to. <laughs> you got to put that castle back on that hill. <laughs> You know, and, yes, and what you do behind it, we don't care. But yes, that castle has to be yes, a replicate of what it's supposed to be. Yes, you know, if they do that and keep that name Canada High on there, yes, you sir. know, you know, it got yeah. to be Canada. Yeah, we well, think we all fight for it, that. It's historical, man. I mean, yes, you can't take that name. That Camden, Camden High School is historical. Yes, I mean, people know about our high school. People don't realize that I've been all over the world. Go and ahead. they talk about our high school. That's right. I mean, like. Like, you know, you don't understand. Yeah, I mean, because I'm, I'm yes. hearing this. Go ahead. You Come know, on. people in the city might only hear it in the city. I'm hearing it all over right the country. Right. That's right. So, you yeah. know, we have, to, we have to fight for that, man, and, and yes. keep that name. Because, like I said, you know, that groomed me. I came out of that high school. That's what I became the man I am today going through that high school. Yes, the sir. teachers that taught me in that high school. Yes, sir. My family went through, walked them hallways, yes, you know. Yeah, yeah. And my son, you know, hopefully my grandson is going to walk through them hallways. Right. So, so let's get it right, yes, you know, sir. and do what's right. Yes, sir. And we, we're going to definitely see to that, yeah. and we're going to make sure that all we can do. And I think it's definitely going to happen. I mean, with the two gyms, I think that would be, that's you know, we, uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be big yeah. for the city. And I think that when uh, DJ come, that time he come, he would probably be the he'll first be year. Be sophomore, the sophomore year, yeah. yeah. Day, we count them. <laughs> so let's, let's be on schedule with this rebuild. Let's be, be on schedule. <laughs> Oh, we got 2023. That's a senior year. Let's get it right. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, I think we all looking forward to that. So, Mel, is there anything that if you had the opportunity that you wanted to talk to the people of Camden? And, uh, you know, this is a show not only uh, it's going to be on YouTube and throughout the world so the world can see it, but it's going to be shown on TV in Camden almost every day. They'll get to see it. What is it that you would like to say to the residents, the people in Camden, the people that's from Camden, that's living other places? What, and, and you had the opportunity. You wanted to say something, and you wanted to talk to your people. Talk to your people, brother. This is to all my people here in the city of Camden. I think we need to try to be more better role models for our youth. I think... We can save a lot of our kids if we got more positive role models. And I think that's a lot of what we're lacking right now because I know growing up, that's what I had. And a lot of us had growing up back then. And then you see a lot of us was able to have success outside of our city. You know, just growing up with role models. I think that's, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. I, Cause I know having a good role model, you got somebody to look up to just like for instance, my kids, I want all my kids to look up to me, you that's know. Right. That's right. I, I'm their role model, Good. you know. So now they look at me and say, okay, 
Let me see what my dad is doing. Or it don't have to be your dad. It could just be somebody, you know, a friend or role model. That's right. I had mentors that wasn't you no know, no relation to me. That's right. But they was mentors to me and they, they guided me the right way. We not we don't have the, a lot of that right. We still have some here, but we don't have enough. Mm -hmm. I think we need to get more people to, to get kids. You see somebody out there, just, just sit and call them over, talk to them. That's right. You know, you might see somebody get ready to do something wrong. Come here, young brother, let me talk to you. That's young right. sister, let me talk to you. Yes, sir. You know, hey, you don't need to go that route. You don't have to go that route. Yes. Let me show you the right route to go. You know, it's just, just you know, just being positive and, 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 you know, role models to these kids. That's the most, and that's with anything, but especially, I'm talking about my city, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a lot of great things there. They, they're trying to do a lot of great things in the city, as you can see, it's grown. Half of it I can't even recognize now. And I'm like, man, yes. downtown is gone. <laughs> My house is gone for downtown. They'll tore it down. So, yes, but you know they're doing a lot of great things and they try to do a lot of positive things. So now we have to get these kids on the same, same bandwagon. We try to do positive things with the, the city as far as restructure and all that. Let's do it with our youth. That's right. And we all grow up together. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. yeah, that's my message to my city. Oh, go ahead. I think that's better said, and there's nothing to say behind that. So what are some of your plans, and what are the things that you would like to do? What, what is it looking like for Milt in the future and some of the things uh, that you would like to do, and uh, even if it's around the country? With, you know, Is it considering coming back to New Jersey? Is, the, is that a con in consideration? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. I'm living in Louisville, Kentucky right now. You know, down there, took a couple of years off from coaching. I could get back into coaching, which I probably will, you know, because I'm starting to get that itch again. Itch again. Ahead, you know, when it's in your blood, it's in your blood, you know. So, yes, so I think a lot of that, is, I'm probably, there's a chance I could come back here, but I know for sure I'll probably get back into coaching. And just like I like helping kids, it's the same thing. You know, we're mentors as coaches. That's right. You know, I know I got a lot of kids. I coached for 14 years. I got a lot of kids. I'm their father figure. A lot of them didn't have any fathers in their life. That's right. Go ahead. That's why I speak about just being a positive role model. And I'm not these kids' father, but they look at me. I recruit these kids. That's right. And they mother, they trust me with these yes, kids. Sir. Here's my son. Yes, you sir. know, you got him. And they call me today. I got kids I ain't coaching like 10 years. <laughs> they calling me. They mom calling me. <laughs> Coach, can you please call my son? Boom, boom. You know, and you know what? Yes, sir. Okay, no problem. That's what I do. Yes, sir. You know, but you know, I understand. Yes, sir. Man, it's like I said. You know, that's that's why coaching. That's that's my past. Cause it's not just the coaching part. It's the mentoring part, you Correct. know, father yeah. figure, just show them the right way. Correct. Some of them don't have that. A lot of them don't have that. Yes, sir. So, you know, I'm just here to, to help. It's like, and I know I got a lot of that from my parents because that's yes, what sir. they do. So, yes, sir. so my mom always say, God, put, put her on earth to do what she does. So I guess yes, I, I'm right with her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Put on this earth to, to help to help others. So, yes, sir. Hey, we appreciate that. And oh, how do you feel? I know it, 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 you know, seeing all your children are doing fine, you know, yes. because they got great. Uh, yeah. Great, great, great and, parenting and, grand, and grandchildren, and, grand. and, and you know yes. some of your extended children, like we got Arthur O.G. Barkley, yes, you know doing well oh, as doing a well. role model. You talk about role model in the city. Kid he, raised another yes, kid, yes, one of the kids I raised. He yes, grew up sir. with my son. They like brothers, so yes, you know he's one of the kids. And you see how he's doing. He had role models in his life. Yes. He was able to go on and you know get his degree. Yes, you know sir. had a good college career. Now hey. He's yes, doing sir. good things here in the city. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir. So, is it what you would like to say to some of your old teammates? I know Kevin Walls too, oh. doing great things, and uh, you know uh, David Kelly is always. Kelly. You can find him in Cooper River yes, every, morning. every morning. I still, Dave, I'm gonna have to start coming up with you. I gotta yeah. do some more, some sit ups yeah. though. But yeah. talk, you know, just send a shout out to the, all the ex players, and 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 people don't know that Camden, not only. Players that you play with on a basketball team, because Coach Turner took the elite and the best, right. and some of times some of the best had to go to other places Crazy and play, right. like Onion you talked right. about, right. who was really Camden, yeah. you know. But oh talk a little bit about um, the people in the community, because you can find some of the, as we talk about role models, even some of the guys that lived maybe a wayward life, they still were role models because they saw that you had a positive I future. Did. They would guide you in the right way, That's keep you right. honest. Let you hang with them to a certain degree. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. Wow. Yes, yeah, but you just hit a point right there because uh, I know from my experience, I had friends that was into other stuff. They was good guys. They yes, was sir. in other stuff. But like you said, when they was about to get into something, they said, all right, Milk, go home. <laughs> yes, sir. I said, we'll be back to get you. <laughs> 
So they'll go. go they won't let me go. Yes. Send me a house. Go. And when yes, they sir. done, come on, wow, we good. Let's go. <laughs> you don't have that no more. They want yes, you with them. Yeah, yeah. They want to take you with them to yes, what they get ready to get into. Go ahead. Back then, we like, no, you got something going on, man. We ain't, you don't need to be involved in this. You stay over here. That's right. You know, when we're ready to go out to the party, well, I'll come back and get you. But I, I, I got to take care of some business. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm cool. Yes, sir. Okay. You yes, know, but, but you know, that that is the self, man. It's like, and like Kevin Walls is doing great things, man. You know, Kev, you know, I talk to Kev all the time, man. We stay yes, in contact. Sir. He comes down to Louisville, actually, to oh, see okay. me. Yes, he sir. drives down, stays the weekend, man. We okay. hang out, man. And uh, Dave Kelly, like you said, is, you know, he still runs Scooper River, yes, which I can't run at all, but he's still doing it. <laughs> yes, is Gary still in Phoenix? Gary's in Phoenix. Just talked yes, to him sir. about oh, a week yes, ago. Sir. Called and checked yes, on my mom. and uh, He was really like a big brother to me when I was in Arizona. Yeah. You know, he was in Arizona Grand Canyon. I would come up yes, to see him. He was a big brother to me. Right. Like, stay focused, man. Yeah. You can't go back home. Yeah, you man, know? that's right, man. Hey, yeah, he, yeah, he hasn't yes, been. But he's, he's doing well out there, man. And Keith Williamson is doing well. Yes, you know, people don't realize about Three or four of them guys went to Kentucky State when you're I went right. to yeah, Louisville. You're right. You're right. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right there, right down the street from Louisville. So, but yeah, but yes. man, all them guys, man, they they doing great things. Loppy kid, Keith yes, Strickland sir. called me the other day, <laughs> want me to come speak to some of his kids. You know, like yes, I told sir. him, no problem. You know, that's my guy. Yes, but yeah, sir. man, and the great Doc Lee, of course. Yes, sir. You know, that's my guy, man. That yes, that guy right there, I love him to death. Yes, but sir. you know, we just, you know, it, it, it's such a great family atmosphere here you know them guys they raised me and some that was under me we all just it's one family one fraternity man that's and, right. and, and you one of my young guys yes, too sir, that's right <laughs> <laughs> he one of my yes. guys too. Your that's brother, for sure your brother was he was one of the mentors yes, above sir. me so yes, you sir. know it is man it's all it's just a great feeling yes, great sir. feeling yeah, yeah. great feeling so as we wind it down on this show, I mean, you got to come back, man, so we can continue to have this conversation, man, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a lot of tweets and a lot of uh, conversation that people say, man, why did you ask Milt this? We wanted to know this and we want to know that. So we have it. we'll have him back. I know his schedule is very, very um, strenuous at these times, and uh, we appreciate to have you. So is there anything that you would like to say in closing? Uh, to anybody or anything that you would like to say. You got the mic. It's your mic, Wag. It's your mic. You got it. I'm passing the rock. <laughs> pass the rock. Okay. Let me see if I can give you a finish here. <laughs> give you a finish. All I want to say is basically just, just try to be positive role model. And I keep stressing on this. Just be a positive role model to these kids, you know, because that's the most important thing now because they're, they're our future. I mean, these kids, this youth are, is our future. So however we raise them, that's what is the future is going to be. So we want to guide them the right way. It's like I said, I see big things coming to the city, and let's raise our kids to, to walk right into that, the, the great things that's about to happen and, they, and be part of it. And, and with that, Yes, sir. I say. Yes, sir. <laughs> there we go. I mean, I, I know you enjoyed this conversation. This is the milk that I've been knowing all my life. Great conversation. Great person from a great family. And I'm just so delighted. And I hope you are just as excited as I am. And we can pass this message on. I say sit down, parents, and listen to this and watch this show with your children. Watch this show with your neighbors and have and talk about what you heard Milt talk about this evening and talk about his family life and the mentors and the role models because all of it is in, interconnected. Is all of our children in our city. I have to be concerned about your children. You have to be concerned about my children. If we don't, we'll let neighborhoods go. And when we let neighborhoods go, somebody else is coming to get them. Because you know the law of misuse and abuse. If you have something that you don't value and somebody see value in it, they're going to take it and use it. So let's not sing that old Negro spiritual of, of, of we should overcome. Let's overrun and let's get your job done here in the city of Camden. Once again, till next time, I'm your brother. I want to thank Milt Wagner for having this opportunity to have this conversation with you. We look forward to you coming back. Oh, I look forward to coming back. I'm glad I, I finally got to get here, man, <laughs> to do this. Yes, sir. We <laughs> Absolutely. appreciate you. No yes, problem. Sir. So until next time, we as we say, stay positive, keep yourself and motivated, and for whatever back was never. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you again. Peace be unto you.